Hey everyone, Charles here. And first of all, thank you for stopping by my podcast. If this show inspires you, makes you think, or gives you that courage to jump into action, please help by donating to this show. Click the link in the description and donate. Your donation helps us with production and finding great guests moving forward. Thank you and enjoy. You know you should be doing something different, right? Hey, I'm talking to you. Do you believe that you have the gift for greatness or have a special talent, but don't have the courage to take that next step? Always wondering how others made it look so easy? Well, welcome to Jump, the show that will bring you special guests just like you and me. How did they get the courage to jump into greatness? Doing what they love and living the good life. So get ready to jump with your host, Charles Matthews, Jr., Yes, yes, yes. Hey, everybody. Charles here. I'm so happy you can join us today. Now, if this is your first time, where have you been? We've been having such a great interview with a lot of special guests. This is Jump. And I'm not talking about jumping up and down. I'm talking about jumping into greatness. It's your time to shine. Success is around the corner waiting for you. Now, I know sometimes you're scared to get to that ledge and try something different. So what I do, I bring interesting guests just like you and me and find out how did they get to that next level? What did they do to jump into greatness. So this is what it's all about. But you know, when you're jumping, you gotta be healthy. You gotta be strong. And sometimes it's frustrating to do both. But I got somebody here to help us out. Let's go, let's go. Please welcome my special guest, Fitz. Hi, girls. Hi, fans. Hey, how you doing? Spectacular. Uh, So good to have you on the show. Yeah, I'm excited that we were able to make it work. Yeah, listen, people don't know what we do behind the scenes. They That's just right. see the, the, <laughs> the, the end product. They don't know, like, get the link. Can't find you. You okay? Yeah, I'm getting in. Okay, my mic's not working. But it's here. And that's all that matters, that we can get the message out to the audience. Yeah, for sure. Well, I've got messages, Charles. <laughs> all right. So before we get down to that road, born and raised, where are you from? Tell us a little bit about you. Ah, born and raised in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm native. I am a, uh, I'm a lizard. I am a reptile. I need a hot rock at all points because I am as Floridian as they come. I live in Gainesville, Florida right now. And I am a fitness expert, a very noisy speaker and race announcer. I'm the author of multiple books and I think a pretty nice gal. <laughs> Why did you say I think? <laughs> I think. I mean, you like to fancy yourself a good egg. I love animals. I've got great kids. So <laughs> mostly a nice gal. I like how you said that. You know, I guess I am. Mm-hmm. So the little girl in you growing up, what did you want to become? Like, where did you see yourself going? Um, You know what? I wanted to run for office. I'm a raging patriot. I love freedom. I love America. I was raised uh, red, white, and blue. And so I thought I was going to be a public servant. And so what I... What I learned along the way is that um, politics are ugly, right? There's too much hate. There's too much hate from all of the sides. And then, you know, what the people of America, sadly, anyone who steps into the ring who says, I'd like to help, I'd like to run for office instantly, they're Mm -hmm. really bad. You can't be a decent person trying to help your community. You're uh, you're instantly the worst person ever. You have an R, you have a D. So I've decided that I actually have a ton of power in the private sector. Mm-hmm. And it's just a lot kinder. So I will serve my fellow Americans by doing good in the private sector. There you go. There you go. So then you, you that dream, you're like, eh. so what was the next one? Uh, well, I do have some sort of uh, sixth grade nonsense. We had to make a who's who. And I did say I was going to win a Grammy Award. Now, knowing I have a terrible singing voice, I'm not sure why I committed to that. But, I, you know, what whatevs. What else? I had big dreams. Dreams do come true. You just have to put it out there, right? Not that one. Not that <laughs> one ever. Not for me, at least. We're going to make it happen. You know, we're going to make sure we make it happen. Okay. All right. So that didn't go through. What was your first job? What was your first paycheck? Do you remember that? I do. In fact, I started earning early. My father owned a company and he allowed my siblings and I to come in and do simple cleaning, vacuuming and taking out trash. And we'd make some money. And I liked that. 
um, my first real job outside the family was the birthday clown at the local skating rink. And it's very funny because the things I do right now are still very much like the birthday clown. I get everybody engaged, informed, entertained. Um, I don't deliver cake and hot dogs anymore, but <laughs> yeah, I was the birthday clown. I led the hokey pokey, damn it. And I was good. <laughs> All right. So where did fits come from now? Where did the fitness fits come from? Uh, I, I, I blew my knee out in when I was 13, 14 playing soccer. And then I went, had surgery. I went to rehab and that physical therapist told my mom, if she doesn't continue strength training and uh, she's going to re-injure her knee. So we lied. We said I was 15. I was only 14 to get a membership at spa lady. I went in there, started exercising, fell in love, started taking classes, thought that was great. Um, at the time, I was working at Cinnabon. That's right, that high-paid, glamorous job. I'm making Cinnabons in the mall on public display, and got eating all the frosting in the back. But um, <laughs> I, uh, that manager, thank God, that manager got real cranky. She was a mean person. Ronnie was her name, and so I quit. And I applied at Spa Lady. I said, "Well, I'd like to work here." And the and the manager is so funny. I applied on the Tuesday, and he said, "Fits, um, can you?" can you teach a class on Friday night? And I said, well, I've never done it before, but I'm willing to give it a go. Thank God I'm a gamer. Cause he said, okay. So he signed me up to teach uh, low impact cardio Friday at six or whatever. I had about 30 women show up and I just kind of did my best. I, I, I taken a lot of classes. So I, I, was honest up front. I said, listen, this is first class I'm ever going to teach. I'm going to do my best at the end of the class. I would love your feedback and and how mature for a 15 year old. Right. Uh, but I said, please give me all your uh, criticism and your suggestions and I'll take it and I'll use it. And the class actually went pretty well. And I remember their feedback being at the start, uh, you're not loud enough, which is hilarious that I was ever not loud enough. And then also that I should do more choreography with my arms. So I added that and then, yeah, things just spun wildly and wonderfully out of control. So then if it wasn't for the icing and that bad person telling you. <laughs> That's right. I might still be making Cinnabons. What a different life I would have been leading, right? <laughs> Thank God for bad people in the world sometimes. You know, they push you to a certain level. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cranky. Have you ever, you know, no one's listening. You ever see that person again? No, 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 Ronnie. Ronnie and I parted ways when I said no more. <laughs> No more at Cinnabon, but I wish her well. And when last did you ever get, you ever gotten a Cinnabon? I think that was it. You know, uh, gosh, what, I think they say each Cinnabon has as many calories as a Big Mac and French fries. It's a horrific nutritional <laughs> product. It was so yummy. Oh my gosh. And they were so cleanly or in clean, clean, cleanliness oriented. So we had to be really precise up front, but in the back, we would go and literally eat scoops of the frosting. And so I actually was an overweight teenager and that contributed greatly. It was just, you know, when you say goodbye, although they're delicious and fun and, um, yeah, yeah. If I weren't really averse to lots and lots of sugar, I'd definitely go back and have one. You know, there you go. Go get your Cinnabon today. Go get <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. Get the mini ones. So now, you know, you, you transition now. You got your first taste. Yeah. How did you become you? How did the career, like, how did you take off? Well, that's, that's, that's a very, I think it's a good story. So I, I leave, I teach for the next few years in Fort Lauderdale at Spa Lady. And I start expanding my horizons. I start doing personal training and I start doing little presentations for Girl Scouts, for example. I was really passionate about fitness. I bought off on it hardcore right away. I thought, this is fantastic. This feels good. This makes me better. And I love helping people. So I started doing little presentations to students. I actually taught group fitness classes, uh, training for the high school football team too. So I just wanted to do a lot within the fitness realm. I went to the University of Florida, instantly auditioned and got hired to teach on campus, which was a blast. Uh, but then I took a summer off from college and I taught on a cruise ship over wow. in Russia and Scandinavia. And I started traveling and they would bring people on and I would do little uh, presentations for the locals. And so I just started expanding my skills and, and my horizons. And I loved helping all sorts of people, whether they were college kids or children or elderly. And then when I came back to UF for uh, the fall, after I got off the cruise ship, there was a TV producer that had a show he was casting. So I auditioned 
and he chose me and I was super excited about that. It was called Cardio Jam. And I had two big aha moments there. Number one is that my skills were transferable to a camera. So teaching in front of a group is very different to teaching to a camera. Not everybody can and should make the the transition, but I did and I did it well, thankfully. And then once the show started airing, I started getting feedback from strangers and it always sounded like this. Are you fit? Yes. Oh, I love you. I watch your show all the time. I work out with you and I have lost 17 pounds or my back no longer hurts. Thank you so much. And you know, I was already helping people in a fitness environment, right? In the gym. And that felt great. But to help strangers yes. was mind blowing. And so I became very excited about that. And then soon after I published my first few articles in national magazines and I got handwritten letters back from people. What? <laughs> so I was a competitive kickboxer for 10 years. And, um, Long story short, my first article is called How to Kick People in the Head. And it's based (laughs) on strategy. You know, it's not about reaching your foot up high. It's about tricking them into leaning their head into your foot. So there's strategy and then strength, the ability to lift those heavy legs up high and the flexibility. So that's the article. And a few weeks after it gets published, I get a handwritten letter from some dude in Kentucky who says, hey, Fitz, I have been doing combat sports and martial arts forever. And thanks to you, I finally kicked someone in the head. And I thought, (gasps) oh. Yay! That's almost like I kicked that guy in the head. So my laser focus <laughs> on mass media became very intense. And it wasn't very long before before I left the gym completely. And I turned all my attention towards mass impacts type work. So it's TV, radio, books, writing for magazines, online work. And definitely I love live audiences, but I like big ones. So I do a ton of corporate keynotes, big presentations. I'm a professional race announcer. So I host some of the largest, most iconic running events in America, the Los Angeles Marathon, Buffalo Marathon, Fargo, Route 66, Sarasota Marathon, you name it. I'm there. And that utilizes my skills of clarity and energy and engagement and you know, in that environment, I'm really not teaching fitness, but I'm rewarding people for fitness. You know, if they come to my races, they're going to have a heck of a lot more fun than the others. And when they come through my finish line, every last one of them up to the dead last finisher is going to feel like a champion. So I love what I do. I love everything about what I do. And uh, I am fitness. It's it's me. So let me ask you this. I asked everybody on the show, you know, Greatness is there, but you got to learn from your failures. Yeah. Tell us one time that you learned from something you did and you know you just failed from it, but you learned from it. Well, I had a lot of failures, right? I'm really good at fitness. It's the business part that was really hard. Um, One in particular that I I just kind of tapped on is that article writing. So um, up until I actually wrote that article, I had been wanting to write articles, but terrified to ask the editor for the opportunity. And so back when I was fighting, Uh, fighting for women was very small. There weren't a lot of us and they found me very interesting. So there was a lot of writers writing articles on me, which sounds great. Um, And they would fly me to LA and take pictures and a beautiful photo spreads. But the problem was, is they were awful articles. They would butcher my name. They would misspell my name, which come on, you're writing an article on a person, spell the damn name, right? And then they would make up quotes And so I was, you know, I had a master's degree in exercise and sports sciences at that point. When I'm a feature of an article, sure, maybe I talk about my fighting experience and so forth, but I'm usually giving some sort of advice and they would make up advice and it would all make me sound like a moron. So every time I'd go to the bookstore looking like excited, there's a magazine with me. And then I'd open it up and I'd think, ah, it's the worst. My name is not Fritz and my last name is not Cobbler. And I didn't say that. So... (laughs) After one particularly brutal training session with, it was me versus four or five people. I was trained, I was doing pre-fight training. So I leave that grueling experience. I get in my Jeep, I go to the bookstore, I get another magazine and I get in my car and I'm spitting fire. I'm so angry about this stupid article that's wrong and making me look like a buffoon. And then I thought, gee, I wish I could just write the article. And then I had the aha moment. I thought, okay idiot. And look, I'm calling myself all these names. I normally don't call myself names. It's in the past. I did some stupid stuff, but I thought, what are you so afraid of? You literally just faced five people in the gym who are trying to beat the hell out of you. You stand in a ring in front of thousands of people with an opponent who wants to knock you clear unconscious and you're afraid to make the phone call. 
duh. So I, I convinced myself I was being dumb. So I get in the car and I go back to my office and I pick up the phone. I call the editor and I say, hey, Bob. Yeah. Hey, this is Fitz. Oh, hey, Fitz. I said, Bob, I would really like to write an article for you. He goes, oh, that would be great. How much money do you need? And I thought, oh, he said yes. And then oh, he's going to give me money. I've been depriving myself of yep. opportunity and income for two solid years because of fear of what? Rejection? Who cares? So from that point on, my philosophy has been, if it does not cause bleeding, bruising, or broken bones, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm going, going for it. I am not afraid. <laughs> All right. So it was not bleeding, bruising. Okay. So that in in that segue, let's have some fun then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for rapid fire. At rapid fire, I put two minutes on the clock. You get to choose your own questions, but you remember you got two minutes. You can elaborate, but you got to get through all these questions in okay. two minutes. Okay. Now, what questions would you like? A, B, C, or D? Uh, give me B. B. All right, two minutes on the clock starts now. What advice would you give somebody going into a business like yours? Um, find a way to do it professionally and avoid doing it as a job because a job won't make you any sort of positive income. If you can find a way to do it as a career, you can make an income, have benefits, pay for your house, pay for a car, and take your family to on vacation. What scares you? Bugs and uh, something happening to my children. Okay, we got to get back to that bugs one. Cats <laughs> or dogs? Oh, dogs. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Florida, for <laughs> the obvious reasons. Florida all day. What would you change about yourself? What would I change about myself? I think I'd like to be a little bit taller. That would be nice. And I would ha I would like to have a good singing voice. <laughs> We're going to get that grimy going. <laughs> What is something you do not like doing? Oof, what don't I like doing? I don't like complaining and I don't like listening to people complain. What is something you do like doing? Anything outside, anything athletic. Favorite hobby? Strength training. Do you remember where your first love was? Where my first love was? I don't know what that means. Do you remember when you first fell in love? Where? High oh. school, junior school, who it was? Yeah, high school. It was Dusty, and he was sweet. He was gentle. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Since you are the workout king or queen, what's your favorite body part to work out? Um, legs, because I'm trying to build them up. I like legs. There you go. With 20 seconds left on the clock, you made it through rapid fire. Awesome. <laughs> we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to find out why you're scared of bugs. <laughs> you can kick somebody in the head and championship. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. CMJ Entertainment is a one-stop shop. CMJ Entertainment helps people do any type of events, and it's a marketing tool as well. So we'll cover everything from start to finish. If it's a wedding, we'll make sure your wedding is over the top. And if it's an event, we make sure that everybody gets information at the end of the day. Give us a call at 416-414-8964 or online at cmjent.com. Hey, it's okay if you're driving or too busy to take notes. Charles has your parachute packed with all the info you need to jump into success. Check out the links section for all the tools you need to land safe. Now, let's keep falling with Charles and his special guest. Yes, yes, yes. We are back live now. You know, we're amazed that you can fight, kick, scrap, <laughs> but you're scared of bugs. What bug is it? I, we got it. You know, we got to know what which bug is it. Uh, well, uh, the Florida thing, the flying cockroaches, the palmetto bugs. Oh, well, see, that's different. Then. <laughs> yeah, it's a big no. Thank you, right? <laughs> and they won't stay still, so you can kick them. Oh gosh, they're. Um... Yeah, they're they're fairly horrible. <laughs> I haven't seen one in a while, thank goodness. But if one of them landed on me, I may just die. I may just okay. die. There you go. So let's talk about one of your first books. Yes. Why did you decide to write a book? Um, well, so this book, My Noisy Cancer Comeback. So this one came out in 2020. And uh, it was a result of my wild and crazy 
15 month battle with breast cancer. So um, I, I have a clean mammogram, sparkling clean. Seven weeks later, I find a sizey lump and no, learn that it's already spread to my lymph nodes. It's running through me like wildfire. So they have to treat me aggressively. And so um, while I told everybody that I, I had no choice but to tell people I had cancer. So I would have loved to keep private information private, but I was about to go bald and I was about to show up all over the country bald. So people were going to start asking questions. So what I tell people is, hey, I've got cancer. It's curable. Um, I'm going to look weird. I might feel bad, but I'm going to be fine. No pity. You can root for me. Uh, end of story. I'll be where I said I'd be. So things go on. And what I also decided at that point is even though I had to reveal I had cancer, I wasn't going to talk about my sickness or suffering while I was going through it for two reasons. Number one, my role in everybody's life is as a beacon of health and happiness, not pain and suffering. So that wasn't just didn't jive with my brand. Right. Uh, but then also I'm completely averse to pity. So if I would have gotten on social media and said, just want to let you know, guys, I spent the night on the hotel, hotel bathroom floor. I'm so sick. I'm, uh, what what does that do? Like, how does that benefit me if the whole world rains down? I'm so sorry. I'm, uh. mm-hmm. So um, there were things I kept to myself. When people asked during my treatment, no matter how bad things got, I would just say, I'm fine. I'm fine. That was the MO. But behind the scenes, all of this um, – crazy stuff was happening and it wasn't even the sickness. So yes, I was violently ill for a long time and I was super thin and uh, everything went to hell. But there was also some really funny stuff that happened. Um, My eyes changed colors. I had an experience where my nose was running. My nose was running and I kept thinking, oh, I'm allergic to the chemo. You know, the chemo is a, a big allergen. It causes all sorts of weird allergic allergic reactions. Well, I learned that my nose was running not because of allergies, but because I had no nostril hair left. Oh. And I was like, oh, are you kidding? And my friend who told me she had recently been through cancer care and she was, said, yeah, you got no nostril hair. And I said, look. And so I tilted my head back and she looks <laughs> up and she goes, there's no hair in there. And I thought, ah, so, you know, for, for even still, my nose still runs because it hasn't fully grown back. So, I mean, whoever thought a woman like me would be wishing for nostril hair, right? So I never wore a wig on my head, but if I could have gotten a nostril wig, I would have plugged <laughs> them in. So um, what I found with cancer is nobody was talking about the weird stuff. You know, there's all these weird things. My fingernails ripped off. My fingernails rotted out on my hands. And I had to live with that. Anytime my hands came close to my face, I could smell rotting fingernails. It was horrific. And so the other thing is, it got really funny. You know, if you're willing to laugh at yourself, cancer can be hilarious. Now, of course, it's awful nightmare and tragic many times, but uh, I was able to have a good laugh at my own expense. And so I started thinking, people might get a kick out of this. I got to tell them about it eventually when I'm done. And then... Because the thing that I do is I help people live better and longer, help them do better and be better. I I had really uh, realized that I had made some wonderful decisions at the beginning of my treatment. You know, I chose perspective. I never had a pity party. My attitude was, hey, I'm not a kid with cancer and it's not my kid with cancer. I'm fortunate to be a grown up with cancer. So I'm just going to put my big girl panties on and soldier on. So perspective. And you don't need cancer to focus on perspective. Someone always has it worse. The thing you're griping about probably isn't such a big deal, Right. Uh, Then I chose my passions. I did not miss out on special events with my kids. I did not miss out on my career. Brilliant decision because if I had not done that for myself, A, I would have been so sad every time a race was happening without me or a a keynote I was supposed to give. Um, I would have only been sick. You know, all I would have been was sick had I not pursued those things. But also, Even though flying across the country was really hard with my level of sickness, there was a lot going on. Every time I stepped on those stages in the morning, and it was 5 a.m., you know, I'd sleep on the hotel bathroom floor, drag myself up, drag myself over to stage. The second I got up on those stages surrounded by thousands of people, everything that was wrong with me disappeared. Everything. Mm -hmm. I wasn't suffering. I wasn't sick. I wasn't tired. All I was was happy. And I was full force Fitz Kohler again because my laser focus was on them, not me. And of course there was the adrenaline and stuff. So, um, so this book is about, you know, it's a good story. It's got a lot of wacky tales, uh, along the way and tales of kindness, but it also, this one is about mental fortitude. This is about you getting a grip and doing the hard things.
I truly believe that your mental state yeah. cures you. You know what I mean? And and just looking at you and listening to you, how bubbly you are, I'm like, yeah, yeah she just went about her day and, and she fought it not just through the chemo, but she fought it through her mental state. Because when you feel bubbly and happy, like your your mind and, and your body just wants to push as well. And yeah. I think that's what that would help you. How do you tell everybody else, yes, you got you know, this disease, but they're all in this loom and groom. Like what was the bright side things you were thinking about? Well, they don't, they don't have, they don't have you going on stage. They don't have like the shows. How do you tell them to think of the bright sides? Right. Well, hopefully they have their own passions, right? So mine, it was my career, my kids. Maybe you love animals. Maybe you love music. Maybe you love art, whatever it is, do those things, make sure. And don't wait for cancer every day. You should incorporate the things you love into your life. It's important for you to take care of you um, but here's the deal. I'm not a superhero, right? I'm just a regular girl. And did I cry? I cried probably every day. It was unbearable stress and it was unbearable sickness. And there was a lot of nightmarish things going on uh, that I won't bore you with here. They're all in the book. But um, I decided not to bask in it. You know, so if I cried, I would let it, I would let it out. I usually would cry alone in my bathroom or alone in my car. I didn't really want to put more on my family. So I would, right. I would cry, I would get it out and I would dry my tears and I would get on with it, you know, and sometimes getting on with it would be taking a nap and sometimes getting on with it would be going to watch my son run and attract me, you know? So I, I wasn't a superhero. I wasn't a natural. Some people might hear the words coming out of my mouth and say, she doesn't know. Oh, trust me. <laughs> I got hammered by cancer. Yeah. I mean, 15 months of chemo, 33 rounds of radiation surgeries. Mm. I was dragged behind a horse for a year and a half. It was, it was horrific, but I made choices and I made my life better because of them. And so you have control. And that's, that's the thing is we can't control everything, but the things that we can control, we should start controlling it from, from the get-go. Absolutely. All right. Book number two. Yeah. Where did that come from? So this one's called your healthy cancer comeback sick to strong. This one is the guide print, the blueprint, the manual for cancer patients and survivors to slow the decline during treatment and rebuild their body um, at the end and after. And so when I hit rock bottom, I they gave me this nasty, nasty drug. So I fought it off. I fought the decline <laughs> off really well for a while. But eventually I found myself... Um, I lost about 12, 12% of my already lean body weight and I lost 80% of my strength. And my mom, my mom, she goes, you look like you're in the Holocaust. And I said, yeah, I know, mom. I know. I know. This is, this is where I am right now. However, when I was in that position, frail and weak, I never had a doubt that I would be able to rebuild my body and get back to strong and vibrant, healthy and athletic. I never had a doubt. Why? Because I'm a fitness expert. Yay for me. However, at the same point, I was feeling super confident. All I could feel was ah, compassion and sadness for my peers, my the other cancer patients, the millions of other cancer patients and survivors roaming around planet Earth who had no idea on how to rebuild their body and how to get back to strong and vibrant and health. And so being a fitness expert with some cancer street cred, this book became uh, mandatory. You know, I decided that I would be derelict in my obligation to help people do better and be better, especially these people, if I didn't put it all down. So, you know, we just talked a little bit about control. Chapter one in this book is about control, you know, leaning in, letting people know that you do not have to sit back as a victim. You can make good decisions for yourself and they will help you reach remission and they will help prevent recurrence. So it's, Foods that help, foods that hurt. There's a huge chapter. Chapter seven is exor everything exercise. So there's body part by body part exercises. But let's say you can't stand up because you have had surgery or whatever. Here's exercises you can do in chair. And then exercises you can do, sorry, in bed. Because sometimes we're stuck in bed. And if you just stay in bed and you do nothing but stay in bed still, you lose mobility, you lose strength, your muscles atrophy, you know, um, you lose balance. All of these things make everything harder and harder as you go on. But if you lie in bed and you stretch out your shoulders, 
all of a sudden you're fighting against that loss of mobility. If you get in the shower and you do the shower stretches that are in the book, you're gaining mobility. You're increasing flexibility. You can stand on one foot somewhere and prevent yourself from falling down in the future. So, so this book is about taking control, all the know-how people need for exercise, nutrition, quality rest, complimentary care, and um, other things to make you smile. So let's go back. Now that you know what you know, yeah. let's go back in time. What is the one thing, you know, when you're fighting and, and going through everything that you wish now that you were like, oh, man, if I only knew that, I wish I had done it. Yeah, the things that I wish I had done sooner were ask those physicians, my doctors, my medical team for help. So the very first week, very first weekend, you know, I have chemo my very first day on a Monday and I feel kind of mousy and weird for two, three days. And then on Thursday, uh, things hit the fan. I explode. I become this wildly sick person and um, I, I become dehydrated. I'm having issues with dilly, dizziness. I'm having balance issues. And I didn't call my doctor because you know what I thought? I thought, well, dummy you have cancer and you're going through chemo. Of course you're sick. Just be sick. You don't have to let him know. He probably knows this. And so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm just suffering. I'm just taking it. All right. And then at about Monday morning, about 2 a.m., I'm up in the middle of the night after getting sick. And I, I email my doctor and I say, Dr. Gordon, I've been so sick. Can you help? He says, oh my God, come in right away. I'll get you started on IV fluids. And uh, it didn't cure me right away, but I started getting IV fluids five days a week for the next five months. If I had <laughs> said something sooner, I might yeah. have saved myself some from some misery. So yeah, I would I would not try to be a martyr and I would not deprive myself of the medical support when it existed. There you go. All right, here we go. Now time for victory. It's now time for pick three. You get to choose your last three questions before we let you go. Give me three numbers between one and 13. Oh, well, we're starting with 13. That's my favorite number. All right. Two more. Um, two and seven. All right. 13. What are three other podcasts you would recommend to your audience and why? Okay, so Rob Lowe's podcast, literally, I love it. He's, I didn't have a crush on him when I was a kid, but he's just really fun and funny and self deprecating and he has great guests. So I really enjoyed that one. Uh, Smartless is hosted by Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and Sean Hayes. And it's another, uh, they interview celebrities or authors, great talents, but they're constantly picking on each other. They're very sarcastic, very, entertaining and <laughs> what else do i listen to conan o'brien's podcast sometimes i'm always out for comedy and some laughs so conan o'brien has a good one called conan needs a friend all right here's a, a strange question and a little fun one what would your how would your parents describe you Oh, my mom calls me her dirty Irish kid. <laughs> That's what she calls me, the dirty Irish kid. So I was filthy growing up and I'm still kind of dirt prone today. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. All right. Last one. Uh, past or present, name two people that you would want to be a fly on the wall or a little birdie on their shoulder that you would just want to follow for 24 hours to find out where, what, how, what they did, everything. Two people. That's good. That's good. So number one, Abraham Lincoln. I just, I would go anywhere with him. He's, he's the father of all freedom. So um, number one guy. And then the other guy would be Garth Brooks. Cause he's my favorite singer. And I imagine he probably sings to himself during the day. And I just <laughs> love that guy. So Abraham and Garth. <laughs> okay. Well, one thing. <laughs> I'm a nerd. There you go. There you go. Listen, it's been an honor or pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much. And keep fighting the good fight and keep teaching everybody because we need more people like you to help others. Thank you so much for having me. This has actually been a lot of fun, Charles. Thank you so much. Now, everybody, what are you waiting for? You see how it is. It's possible. Don't stand there. Don't stand behind a gate. Get to the stop and it's time to jump. Whatever's happening, you can fight it. But you need to take that first step and jump. Your greatness is there. 
Let's do it. We'll see you next time, everybody. Hey, hope you had a great time listening to the show. If you think I did a great job, please buy me a coffee. I still got a lot of work to do. We would love to hear from you, your feedback. So please click the link and leave us a review. You can help us grow by following us on all social media platforms and sharing this link. Once again, it's time for you to jump. Success is waiting.